Right there on my finger is a ratchet that I just made today. And uh, that's going to be the subject of this video. If you can't see the teeth on it, I don't see them either and I'm standing right here. But we'll put it under my bench microscope and then uh, we'll take the old one and we'll put it under the uh, uh, toolmaker's microscope and get all the angles and the offsets from it and uh, then go down into the shop and make it. Um, so that's what this video is going to be about uh, today. But before we get started, let me show you. This is I went to dinner uh, lunch the other day with a buddy of mine. And he's a clockmaker, and he asked me in the course of the lunch if I could make him a, a ratchet. And I've made parts for him, but I've made wheels. I think this is the third ratchet I've made for him. And anyway, it looked like a, a, a fun job. It's kind of small. It's for a carriage clock. But this is a ratchet that you might have seen before, because I've had it on my video about the Eureka tool. This is the ratchet sleeve. And... The ratchet, I mean, the ratchet here is a radial. It runs right through the center of the uh, of the sleeve. Now, watchmakers, clockmakers, have a tendency to do an offset, so they move it off to the side here, and then they cut their teeth. Um, this one that I'm working on today was about almost six degrees. So anyway. Uh, to, uh, so we'll work with offsets today as well, and try to show you what how I you know, how they work, and uh, you'll see the kind of teeth that you get when you use an offset. Now this is not the clock that the uh, the tooth came out of, that ratchet wheel came out. Of. This happens to be one that I've got, but this is a carriage clock, and they're pretty similar. Uh, get into them in the sides, so you can see into the sides, and uh, they usually open in the back. And uh, you set your time on that one, and you wind it on that one. A lot of them have chimes, uh, not chimes so much as a, a strike. So they strike on the hour. And the interesting thing is, they've got a little, usually have a little uh, button you can push. And the last chime that ran, if you push the button, it'll run again. So if it's at night time, all I have to do is push the button and you don't have to be able to see the face. And uh, almost all of them have a platform escapement like that, visible through the top. Anyway, so that's what a uh, carriage clock looks like. So let's go ahead off to AutoCAD and I'll, uh, I'll show you a drawing of uh, this uh, ratchet that we got to work on today. This is an AutoCAD rendition of the uh, arbor and the ratchet uh, that I'm working on right now. And there's the uh, ratchet right there. Down this end, it's squared and it's tapered for to accept the winding key. And there's another square right there. Other than that, all the rest of it's round stock. Okay, this is the setup that we're going to use to remove the uh, ratchet from the uh, arbor here. And we're going to use a stake from my stake, a watchmaker staking kit here. Uh, but it's a little bit too big to put on the anvil here. Uh, so we've, I've set up a little one here that we can use. And uh, the, uh, the stake fits right over the pivot. And then we'll just tap it out of there, hopefully. Uh, well, now that we've got the uh, ratchet off of the arbor, I've brought it over to the other side of the room where I have my, uh, this is a Nikon uh, uh, stereo microscope, and I put it under the Nikon microscope, and you can see that it comes up over here on the screen. And uh, so to inspect it and to uh, take a good look at it, I'll be re putting the camera over there, uh, and it'll be directly on that screen, and we'll go over the, uh, the ratchet and uh, get a look at it and see what we can find out about it. First to see if we've got any teeth missing or damaged. No, uh-uh. But they're pretty worn. This here, that's your locking face. 
you can see they're pretty well uh, worn down <clears throat> and uh, there's almost no lock to them left at all yeah so I think uh, boy trying to get the angle out of here over on the toolmakers microscope going to be rather difficult there's no really defined angles uh, maybe this down in here we can get a good angle out of there but once we get over there that I won't be able to show you what I'm doing on the toolmakers microscope because I don't have a video link to the eyepiece uh, but uh, I'm going to be f trying to figure out that angle and then the offset of that angle and then uh, it's much easier to count the teeth on the toolmakers microscope so I'll be doing that over there as well uh, let's take a look at the back alright now uh, what we've got is a little bit of rounding here and that's that's normal when you use a cutoff tool uh, this is a uh, this is what you get on the uh, right side uh, of a cutoff tool when you're cutting off a ratchet uh, you'll see that when I do mine uh, uh, after I'm done cutting it off I'll take it over and uh, uh, flatten it out on a uh, an Arkansas an, an India and then an Arkansas stone and uh, this one doesn't look like it's been done uh, but you can also see there's a uh, there's flat areas so the uh, wheel this wheel is not really probably round either yeah really not that round all right so the next step is uh, let's go over to the toolmakers microscope we we'll count the teeth we'll uh, figure out the angle and we'll try to figure off the offset this is uh, my toolmakers microscope it was made in Germany um, actually it says West Germany so that should give you an idea of how old this is it's a pretty old one um, but the West Germany also speaks to the exceptional quality it's got a, it's a really good quality machine I really like it a lot and uh, this is the field down here that's where we'll do all our measuring from and this actually turns the field but what we're going to be using is first we're going to count the number of teeth and there's a graticule in here a, a piece of glass that's uh, laser etched and I'll show you what it looks like in AutoCAD uh, but we'll use that to count the teeth so that'll be the first thing that we'll do alright this is exactly what I see when I look through the eyepiece of my toolmakers microscope and this is the ratchet and I put it into the center of the screen the red lines are etched on the graticule there's 12 of them and there's one two three four in each section so four times 12 is 48 so we know that the number of teeth that we have on uh, that ratchet are uh, 48 now the second thing that we want to do now that we know how many teeth that we have is we want to get the angle of the uh, thing of the teeth now you'll notice up here on the eyepiece we have an eyepiece here and then we have another eyepiece over here this eyepiece here is a vernier and we'll use this to turn the vernier scale that's inside here on the uh, gr graticule and we can measure it up there in that eyepiece and that's how we'll get our angle Okay, now you can see what I've done here. I've moved the ratchet down so the center point of the graticule is right there. And now I take a reading from the vernier scale in the second eyepiece. And I make note of that. And then I'll come back here again and I rotate. And I rotate until I have that position. I go back over to the vernier and read the vernier, subtract the two, and now I have my angular measurement, which turned out to be 48 degrees. Uh, and I did that actually as a, an average between two or three different teeth that I looked at that I thought that I could get a good measurement from. And so that was how I got the 48 degrees. Now let's continue on to the offset. Okay, the next measurement that we need to get is the offset. And to get the offset, we're going to be using the x-axis uh, micrometer scale there. And as we look through it, we'll just uh, move over uh, and uh, take a measurement. 
and I'll show you now in AutoCAD how we do that. So, so a combination of moving the dials on the X and Y axis and the vernier, I managed to get the center line of the microscope right on a line, a vertical line on the ratchet itself. Now what I need to do is measure the distance between this line and the center of this circle here. So in order to do that, I'll take the reading off of the uh, uh, x-axis vernier right now and then uh, I will uh, uh, move the line over to the center of the circle. Okay, so now we have it over the center and we look at our uh, difference between the two numbers and we come up with our offset. Okay, now we know our offset is 0 0.0343. We know that our angular measurement is 48 degrees and we know that we have 48 teeth. But before we end, I want to take two more measurements. I want to run the OD and then the OD of the innermost point of the ratchet teeth. Okay, get those measurements. Now I just subtract these two measurements and I have my uh, approximate depth of what I'm going to be uh, uh, making my cut, the depth I'm going to make my cut to. Now you need to remember too that uh, this is all taken from a, a ratchet that's uh, an old ratchet that doesn't work and is worn out. So pretty much uh, uh, we just want to get into the ballpark of what will lock well. And I think with the numbers that we have now, we can build a ratchet that will lock well. Uh, there may be slight modifications needed to the click or the pawl to make sure that it fits well with this ratchet, but the, the modification should be small. Uh, so let's go ahead down into the cellar now and make this ratchet. Grinding this uh, with an eight degree release uh, on the front there. Alright, let's take a look at it. That's good enough. Alright, so the top of the bit is the uh, uh, cutting edge, and so a quick flat run on here. And we'll uh, brighten it up a little bit, and uh, this bit will be ready. Here we're turning the OD of a piece of brass that's going to become the ratchet. It will never leave the blade to the position it's in now. It won't become unchucked. It just won't come off. It stays right here all the way through the cut and process. The center hole is a little undersized. We'll open it up with a brooch later. But right now we're going to put a center into it so that I can line the cutter up easily. Notice on the end of the z-axis I have a CNC rotary table and then that's a Sherline head there and it's on a vertical slide. You'll also see there's a stepper motor at the end of the uh, z-axis. Now this dicum is the only way you can see what's going on during the cut. Alright, I sped this up quite a bit. Uh, I got 48 teeth to cut, so <laughs> it took a while. But uh, you get the basic idea of how it went. like the cutting of the gear, I sped up the uh, parting off. I'm sure you've seen parting off before. But 
there it is. I got three gears out of it. I got three ratchets from this one uh, piece. That's a diamond uh, uh, flattening stone on the bottom there, and I'm cleaning up my India stone, getting it nice and flat. This stone, I keep it pretty flat, so it didn't take much. Now this flattens out the ratchet. You can see as the oil gets darker in color, how much brass you're taking off. Now the, the diamond lap was uh, cleaned before, now the hard Arkansas stones flattened out. This one too, I keep it pretty flat so there wasn't a lot to have to do on it. This one doesn't flatten the brass, it kind of polishes it and it gets plenty, back, plenty black plenty fast. Let's have a look around. Well, that's looking pretty good so far. Yeah. Yeah. The locking face is looking quite nice on all of them. So that's really good. Let's go ahead and bring the uh, the old one in. And uh, so there's the difference between the two. I think uh, this new one will work out pretty good. All right. This is a set of five-sided cutting brooches, and it has five sides, and they cut. And it, it's they're tapered. Normally I use them on clocks to uh, open up pivot holes to accept bushings and things like that. Uh, but the last thing that I'm going to do before I uh, uh, turn the ratchet over to my friend is I want to take a five-sided brooch and make it close to going on here. He can finish it off at his shop with his brooches. Uh, and that's done very simply. We'll just, whoops, oh, that's too big. There we go. And that'll get it ready to, uh, to fit on City Arbor. I just got this uh, JPEG from uh, in an email from my friend. He said everything went fine. He had to broach out the hole, but he did not have to mo even modify the uh, the click. You can see the click here inside the uh, red circle here. But this long tail on the click, that's actually the click spring. So the click and the click spring, it appears to be all one uh, one piece. I've never seen that before. Normally the click spring is a separate piece. Uh, but anyway, uh, and there's not two ratchets in there. That's just a reflection on the uh, the brass plate. Let's get in and get a better look at this. Alright. Yeah, he said everything works fine, so uh, I think I'll call that a done deal. And uh, I want to thank you all for stopping by the shop. And I'm going to be working on the grasshopper clock pillars next. And I'll have that out uh, uh, soon enough here. Uh, Y'all have a good day. Bye now.